Hello, this is Professor Luce, and today we're going to talk about conclusions. So hopefully you've already watched the video on introductions, and the great part about conclusions is that you already know the material, it's just putting it in the right order. And so after you've given your introduction, then you have the main body of the speech, the final step is going to be the conclusion, and there's two parts to the conclusion. The first is your review statement, the second is your concluding statement. For the review statement, Basically use the same language as a preview, but you just make it past tense. We've talked in introductions about why repetition is key. So if you had four main steps to uh, building a table, you would then say, so today we have talked about the four main steps of building a table. First is gathering your materials. Second is going to be building the legs. Third is building the body of the table. And fourth would be finishing. So you just change future tense, which happens in the preview, to past tense, which happens in the review. You don't have to use the exact same words, but it should be like 90% or more the same exact language. Keep it simple, and that keeps repetition in your speech, and therefore your audience is more likely to remember it. The second component of the conclusion is a concluding statement. This is not saying, and that's all I got, and that's the end. Thanks for listening to my speech. That's the kind of stuff you want to avoid. You're not Bugs Bunny. You don't need to say, and that's all folks, right? So instead, make it engaging and use one of those devices that we talked about for the introduction for the attention getter. So you can use a quotation, you can use a story, you can use a joke if you want to. It would be kind of weird to use a startling statement. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it'd be a little weird. Um, I personally like quotations and stories. It's up to you. Pick something you're comfortable with, but you want it to be memorable. Again, the key here is that you're not saying, and that's all I got, and that's it. It'll give the speech a sense of finality if you do it right, and you'll be able to tell by reading it and watching other people's speeches. They usually leave it on a good note. I tend to like quotations for me as a concluding statement, but stories, especially if you're using the part of stories where the beginning, middle, and an end of a story are spread throughout the speech. So the beginning of the story happens in the introduction, the middle of the story is used for your transitions, the end of your story is used for your concluding statement, then it can work really well as well. Alright, that's it for conclusions.